obstacles so work can get done faster with more clarity and more autonomy. With Holacracy in place, instead of trying to convince his boss to act, Adam can propose getting the authority he needs to act on his own. He goes to a special meeting designed to achieve incremental improvements in the way things are organized. It follows a disciplined process that gives everyone a voice, but without the tyranny of consensus. In the meeting, Adam gets more authority to fix issues himself, so he can move forward without requiring his manager's help. In this way, Holacracy distributes leadership throughout the company, empowering everyone to be an entrepreneur in their roles. Instead of serving the boss and fighting the status quo, everyone drives continual improvement, serving the purpose and the customer. So in short, it's a, a replacement for the management hierarchy, as I said the other day. Uh, let me pull up a, a picture. So this is a software tool we use uh, to help companies track their governance records, as we call them in democracy. And what this tells you, this gives you the clarity of who has the authority to make which decisions, what can we expect of each other, and all that. Uh, in democracy, it's not a manager that drives that clarity. It's that meeting process that was mentioned in the video. It's a governance meeting that distributes authority and gets clear on what's yours to control, what's mine to control, what's the boundary between us, what can I expect from you, what can you expect from me, how do we change all that anyway? That's what holacracy ultimately defines. So in this example, this is uh, my company. Um, and uh, this is our organizational structure. It's what it looks like. If I, if I drill in, for example, uh, let me look into our community outreach circle here. Uh, these are all the different roles at play in this, this circle, team, department, whatever you want to think of it as. Uh, these are the roles I fill. Notice there are many, right? So in democracy, people fill many roles, not just one. Uh, and each role has some autonomy. It has some expectations on it. And it might have uh, some property to control as well. So. Uh, by default, let me look at my Holacracy spokesperson role right here. This is one of the roles I fill. Uh, it's the role that brings me to Antigua today. Uh, it has a purpose, and I have some accountabilities. The purpose tells me why this role exists and what I'm trying to achieve. The accountabilities tell me what others can expect of them. Uh, they're pretty concrete. They start with verbs. They're ongoing functions of the organization. Uh, with the Holacracy constitution in place, I have the authority in this role to take any action that makes sense to me to express my purpose or my accountabilities as long as I don't violate somebody else's property right, which in democracy is called a domain. Right? So much like in real life, if I'm living my life in society, I have the authority to do whatever makes sense to me to express my purpose or enact my responsibilities as long as I don't violate somebody else's property right. right? So it's that same basic ethic. There's no manager empowering me. Right? The system itself holds space for fundamental use of power. And I have a pretty blanket, permissive stance. So by default in democracy, instead of you need permission to act, it's actually the opposite. It's you have a blanket authority to do whatever makes sense to you until a limit or a constraint is put in place. And those are put in place not by somebody trying to predict up front all of the structure we need, but it emerges from tensions for the video. When somebody has a tension, something's not quite working right, we use that to drive Clarity. What constraint do we need? Or what expectation do we need? So for example, if I look at another role in our circle here, uh, our <coughs> website architect, our web architect role, has a domain. This is this role's property. This role controls our website, holacracy.org. Right, so that tells me that although it's a spokesperson in my role, I can do whatever I want to express my purpose, but not if I need to edit the website. Right, then I need to go get permission from this role and follow any procedures this role wants to put in place controlling that website. And if I realize that's too much, it's too restrictive, I need to expect something from them. Well, then I can go to a governance meeting and I can propose a new accountability in this role. Right, because if he's going to own and control the website, well, then you know, we better be able to expect him to be creating and evolving a user-friendly navigation and structure for it. Right, and whatever else we might need. Uh, so, uh, the, the what, what this ends up in at the end of the day, then, is a distributed authority system. There's no boss telling us what to do and breaking it down. Instead, there's roles with different property that they're controlling, different responsibilities, and a process for changing all that over time. Uh, so 
to use a, to extend this example, early in our company's history, uh, we did not have any domain defined around the website. In other words, it wasn't defined as property of any one role. And when it's not explicitly defined as limited control by one role, anyone can do whatever they want with it. It's considered community property of all roles in the system. So that works fine. When we were three or four people in a startup, everybody just went and updated the website whenever they thought that would be useful. And that actually works for three people for a while. <laughs> Until it doesn't. <laughs> and then our poor web architect with the purpose clear and sexy website says, I cannot keep a clear and sexy website when 10 people are updating it whenever they want, right? So he says, I need to have a property right in that website. He proposes that in a governance meeting. And it gets processed through a, there's a really cool process for that. It gives everyone else a chance to say, wait, if you just control that, it's going to cause harm in my role. And then here's why. There's a whole testing process for making sure that's really grounded in the organization's needs, not the person's personal ego. And if it makes it through that test, then we figure out what we need to add to address it. Maybe we need some new accountabilities that go with the property or something like that. At the end of the day, we go through that process and we have a domain of our website on our web architect. And it can change any time through this governance process. Which, by the way, this governance process is distributed and happens in every single circle throughout the organization for the work of that circle, for the roles in that circle. Uh, and circles themselves come and go. Some circles uh, appear whenever a circle says, you know, one of my functions is growing too big for one person alone to fill, so I'm going to let it break itself down into multiple subfunctions. Uh, but now notice one of the, the key differences here. This is not a hierarchy of people with power relationships to direct other people. Management hierarchy. This is rather a structure called a holarchy. It's, it's nature structure. It's a fractal structure. Just like your body, each cell has autonomy, and yet it's part of an organ, which also has autonomy. Right? It has its own self-organization, its own functions to express, and it doesn't violate the autonomy of its cells to do it. And yet that organ is also part of an organ system, which is part of you. Right? So that's a holarchy. That's the structure used, but it's not a hierarchy of people that doesn't make any sense. People are autonomous and not to be governed by the organization. Rather, the organization governs its roles, its functions, its property, its processes. Right? That's what this holacracy constitution does. It gives you a framework for governing this, not the people. People are left more like free agents to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to agree to show up in this company and fill some roles. And when I do, I'm not driving it forward for my purpose. I'm stewarding them almost as a fiduciary for their purpose. And that's the commitment I make when I contract to show up and do something with this organization. I'm going to fill these roles, all these many roles I have on my plate, uh, to the best of my capacity for their purpose and to enact their accountabilities. So that is the uh, very, very short whirlwind tour. At the end of the day, what this looks like uh, is much more like a market of lots of individual free agents showing up and filling lots of roles, and those roles having lots of autonomy to express their purpose, and yet a governance process when we need to figure out the intersection between them. So questions? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is, what's the scale of holacracy? Does it work with uh, a three-person office yeah. Oh, to a 3, organization. Yes. Uh, the largest company actively fully using Holacracy is Zappos.com. They're about 2,000 employees. Uh, the smallest, there's a two person organization running quite happily and effectively with Total it. Marriage. Uh, you know, <laughs> 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 uh, I have stories about that. <laughs> uh, three people is kind of a practical minimum. I don't recommend it with two, but well, three it works great. What is the cluster without the circle? Is anyone actually in charge in a conventional sense? And how do you do compensation when they're really political issues? Yeah, so the, the first question is anyone actually in charge? Uh, you know, imagine asking that question in society. It doesn't even make sense. You know, you're in charge of your property, yourself, your expression of your purpose and your responsibilities, and your neighbor is the same for theirs. Right? That's what, what happens here. There's no one person in charge of everything. We break down the work and we figure out what are you in charge of, what are you in charge of, what are you in charge of. Not by putting it on you as people, but by putting it on roles and then finding the best people to fill the roles in this role marketplace. You're invited to shop around, find roles that you're a good fit for, convince whoever has the authority to assign you to a role. Somebody has to have that authority. 
Right? They, there's a role for that in arms. So nobody is in charge, and everybody's in charge, just like in society. You're in charge of your role. You are a leader of your role and a follower of others, if you will. And when you need to expect something from them, there's a governance process to sort that out for the sake of the broader purpose, because we want alignment with that broader purpose. Your second question about compensation. So if you think of Holacracy as a new operating system or a new platform, uh, there are apps you need to make any operating system worthwhile. I love my, my iPhone but it's the apps that really make it a useful tool. In Holacracy, it is a platform, it's an operating system. It does not tell you how to compensate, how to fire, how to build your widgets, uh, how to deliver your services, right? It's the platform. You need apps on top of it. Uh, so you need a compensation app. And if your compensation app relies on a management hierarchy to determine it, you're screwed because that's not compatible with this operating system. Uh, but there are other versions of compensation, ones that, for example, might work with badges that people can earn representing marketable skills and then compensation type of badges. And you can have a compensation app like that will work very well with Holacracy, as will others. Uh, to help with that, there's a Holacracy app store on our website where we invite all of the hundreds of companies using Holacracy to submit common solutions for common needs like compensation. Uh, and we have several apps published on there ourselves uh, that we've built. Other questions? Yeah. So, um, with, if the web uh, responsibilities are subbed out to another organization? Uh, yeah, in that case, the question is what roles do we need to manage that process? What accountabilities do we need to expect from them? Okay. Uh, or, in fact, for that matter, in the web architect role, right, this role has the authority to take any action that makes sense to him to express that purpose and these accountabilities. And he has control of that domain, he can choose to do that himself. Or he could choose to say, hey, I need to propose a role for a web developer, web designer, if he doesn't want to outsource it. Right? And then he can go pitch for funding and try to get those roles funded. Right? Um, so it's really up to him how he wants to, to do that. So I, this is wonderful stuff. I'm going to ask you later how I can get an advanced copy of your manuscript. Uh, but I, so, so there is a corporate governance issue. I don't know how it plays. According to the Securities Exchange Commission, this is not the structure of your firm. Uh, and there are people who sign documents that are in charge and so forth and so on. Also in the market, uh, I would just state the question by naively taking the position, it's not the way the market views your firm. If you have hundreds of firms aligning internally like this, there may have been takeovers, there may have been changes in ownership. Um, and they may have had different ideas, they may have restructured in some way, I don't know if you've gone through that or, or see how that evolves. I, I, I'm not saying it's incompatible, I just want to know how it works. Or, you know how it works. Yeah, we've seen the first case fairly recently of a company running fully with Holacracy that got acquired by a larger, more conventionally run company. Mm -hmm. And actually they let that company, they walled it off and said, you know what, what you're doing is working, yeah. keep doing it that way, we won't mess here. Uh, so that was one case. Uh, I'm sure it could have gone the other way too. Uh, and uh, I know at least one company that is, that's part of the negotiation uh, for the acquisition. They want to make sure that they can continue running as they do. Uh, there is only one, uh, Zappos is a public subsidiary of Amazon, so they have the public company issues. And they have to navigate that, but they do that by creating the right roles. There's a whole policy system here as well, the right policies, uh, to kind of bridge or make a translation layer between the needs of the outside regulatory world and the inside world. And then finally, there's a solution my company took, which is perhaps the uh, most out there of the all that most of our clients don't want to touch at all. Uh, we have integrated the Holacracy Constitution, the legal governing process, right into our bylaws and connected it right with the underlying regulatory framework in our jurisdiction. So it is a legal reality now for us. There is no longer a different underlying power structure legally. It's this, it's enforceable in court if it needs to be. Uh, and uh, one of the cool things about that is we can take a stance because of that, that uh, we have no employees. They are all business partners. In the U.S., they get a K-1 statement, not a W-2 tax statement. Uh, we, as we grow, will never have an employee. Everyone is a legal voice in the governance of the entity, right? And we structure our compensation. They have a, a something that mimics the salary with some profit sharing component, right? All of which meets definitions of business partner legally. So we dodge all employment regulation out there and say we're not subject to it. We're not withholding taxes. We're not using workers' compensation insurance. We're not legally required to do any of those things for business partners. And that's what we are. Sorry, sorry. And I know that is probably way beyond it. Let me just say that it's not part of Holacracy. That is just what we're doing. 
uh, and this enables it. That said, more later, or keep, we can keep going in the group out there, but we just need to vacate this room for my commitment to these guys. We don't want to move. I know. We can keep chatting in the group, and I'd love your help figuring out how to leverage this to spread these principles of freedom to people using this. So that's what I'm about. Thank you. You need some permanent showrooms. Because, for example, you mentioned Electra and all of those. You can have a showroom in these places where they sell televisions, so anyone can see how it works. So whenever they get there to buy a television, they already see the computer and say, oh, I would yeah. like to have This has to be in the television area, mm -hmm. as well as in the computer area. Mm -hmm. And your, your advertisement should be convert your TV for just this a small quantity yeah. in a, a powerful lot, a lot. computer. Mm -hmm. Like expand the power of your TV. Uh-huh. Right. TV to PC. What? <coughs> expand the power of your TV. To a PC. Of the internet. Um, and whether everyone has access to it. 13%. What? 13%. One three. Okay. So Even through their phones. Ah, I don't know. I, I, that number is changing very quickly. Yes. Now, you don't, you wouldn't have had it really much. Yeah. So I think it's quite the same. Great job, with the special conditions, fiscal and other uh, yes. advantages. That's yes. right? Right. Why not that giving the right to the investors? And then um, investors will create uh, with their own demand the, the land development or, or, or the things that they are need, that they need. I'm thinking in the Maquiladora, yes. um, um, investment condition in Mexico. Is, uh, this con these uh, conditions are given to a company. Yes. Not 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 to a, a and it's a special sum for a company. Yes. Yes. I, I, I think that if we uh, open the the conditions, not like thinking in a special zone and a special land development and could be anywhere in the country yes. and for any investment and, and and we give that conditions to that investor yes um, it will help a lot yes i think i think, that's, I think that's directed to land developers yes most of, uh, there's there's uh, um, industrial land developers there's other land developers yes uh, you have to fix uh, what kind uh, of developers yes and business and they will go for investors after getting the, the rights. So in other words, if you will watch the business you have all of that, it has to call for or have agreements with the owner before the the the, the, the to buy the rights. Why don't you miss why don't you give the right to the rights? No, you don't. But you, you, but, but you, you, you sit there. You're like a, an Eastern European voucher holder. You hope somebody shows up five times in the factory and invests in it.